This is the beautiful Lakes District, one of New Zealand's tourist hotspots for travellers from all around the world and one of the most beautiful wonderlands to play in throughout New Zealand. Known for its geothermal activity and magnificent hot pools, snowboarding and skiing during New Zealand's winter and many more iconic tourism activities. It's fitting that Australasian motorsport enthusiast Tony Quinn has added New Zealand's only FIA Grade 2 circuit to a stable alongside Hampton Downs and Highlands Motorsport Park. Topo has seen some amazing motorsport events over the years, A1GP and D1NZ since its inception in 2003. And D1 returns after several years. So the future is bright for Topo International Motorsport Park as we get ready for the opening round of the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Proudly brought to you by Repco. The D1NZ competition format sees three judging officials take the helm in race control, overlooking the three major scoring criteria, line, angle and style. Together they form a score out of 100. Line is a predetermined racing line the drivers need to navigate. This is marked out by scoring areas called clipping points. Drivers need to hit these scoring zones to score a maximum of 35 points for each pass. Angle is how much rest slip angle a car produces. Each driver has 35 points available for maintaining as much angle as possible throughout the drift course. Style is a combination of throttle control, handbrake application, car speed and the overall fluidity of each run, with 30 points up for grabs. Teams have two laps in qualifying to start the competition. The driver with the best score takes pole position, with the top eight drivers securing a spot in the top 16. From here the competition moves into the battle phase, forming a seated battle tree, battling through the top 16, the top 8, the top 4 and through to the finals. The battle phase of the competition sees each driver scored on a lead and chase run. The lead driver's objective is to set or better their performance in qualifying, while the chase driver's objective is to get as close as possible to the leading car, using it as a mobile clipping point. The chase driver needs to emulate or better the lead car's run while also maintaining the original scoring criteria. The three judging officials will then decide the winner by a majority decision. If it's a draw, they'll call an OMT, where the cars will battle one more time for sudden death. Drivers also need to be mindful of penalties while competing out on the track. Points deductions are handed out for one or two wheels off track, spinning out, straight lining the course or making contact with the walls or the other car. One thing's for certain though, rubbing is racing. Each driver has one competition timeout available to use during the battle phase of the competition. This can only be used once and gives teams a chance at servicing their car in pit lane and that is how it's done for the Valvoline. D1NZ Drifting Championship Series. One of the most crucial factors of drifting, the judges, who are respected and engaged with the current drivers. Now, it's not an easy task, and stepping up to the plate are these fine men. Mark O'Hara out of Christchurch. He's been drifting for 14 years and returning for his third year with D1NZ. Mark is the line judge. He's got 35 points out of 100 up for grabs. Two-time Drift South champion Joel Counter and another Christchurch driver with eight years under the belt and a former pro driver in D1NZ also has 35 points to dish out, but his role? Angle. The newcomer to 2022 is none other than the iconic New Zealand drifting veteran Stephen Soul. 15 years of D1NZ Pro driving, he's also ventured to the birthplace of drifting, Japan's Ibisu circuit, where he placed third overall in the G1GP Championship. Stephen has 30 points for style. Very fitting for one of the most flamboyant D1NZ drivers to date. So this is what it is. Let's take a look at the track preview, shall we? And Brendan Dunker, take us through it. Yeah, Taupo Motorsport track. So look at that um, that first initiation there onto a left hand inner clip. Through the start line. Left hand inner clip here. You want the front of your car close as possible. Set yourself up for this right hand outer zone. We want the rear of the car sitting through that zone. You've got a careful mid-track switch. Put the nose of your car onto the start of the zone, a quick flick to put the rear onto the edge of that zone, a quick dart across to the left to fill that inner clip, sit wide here, a nice big flick. Now we've got a bit of a deceleration zone, the rear of your car will fill that out of zone, find the right line to hit this late inside clip here, breathe on the throttle just so you don't spin and send out to the finish line. 
All right, well, let's have a look at the uh, top 16 battle tree. On the left-hand side, we're going to have Fang at Dan Woolhouse going up against Jordan Joyce. Cody Pullenbury and Michael Thorley. Jace Brown back against David Hunter. Problems with the card. Dan Dippelman going up against James McManaway his first time. Taylor James versus Ben Jenkins, Dave Steadman and Jesse Greenslade, Sean Potros, Kurt Blackie and Adam Davies versus Ben Wilkinson, another man who's come back as well. As you can see, Jordan Joyce coming up the inside there. Doesn't want to give Fanger Dan any room here as he comes up, but starts to light the tyres. Fanger throws it into the first section in here. Drops a little bit of a wheel on the outside there. Coming down the inside there. Transitioning nicely. Look at Jordan Joyce coming back up on the inside, but Fanger just laying down a real good lead run here. Try not to get to that outer zone. Jordan Joyce is short. Falling a little bit short there on this outer zone before he comes to that inner clip. But Fanger doing what he needs to do, Steve. Banger doing it. This guy knows how to drive. He's not a two time champion for nothing in the Century Batteries RTR Mustang. We'll see what happens as a Worthington towing and transport. Nissan of Jordan Joyce hits the track. His first lead run in the Pro Championship, taking the step up from the Yeah, a little touch there, Steve. Oh, and Banger's gone, nearly lost his drift. See how that caught him out. Wow. Jordan did a little bit of a different transition. It really caught Fanger out. Fanger collected the back of him. Jordan doing really well, holding it there. Fanger doing an awesome job catching back up, getting back on his door, but. All right, well, I believe the result is here. We've got Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, and Stephen Soule. Left for Fanger Dan. One, two, three. Fanger Dan goes through. Up for our next battle here, we have Cody Pullenberry versus Michael Thorley. That's Cody's right. got a beautiful new S15 that he's built up. Same with Michael Thorley. RB versus 2J here. Cody throwing down a big, <laughs> big entry and a lot of lock into that centre section. Look at the smoke trail he is putting there for Thorley. Really pulling a bit of a gap. Rolling into this final section of the track here. Tucking the nose in to try and get that clip there. Thorley doing what he can to try and keep up. But look at that smoke cloud that Cody Pullenbury is laying down there. Him and his brother, Case Pullenbury, they've got two identical cars. They're looking immaculate. And I know these two have um, done really well. Well, are, are doing really well with having a nice, responsible car. So here we go, Thorley out leaving. Cody right up on the inside. See, clip that little inner clip. Foley doing a big lead run out there, nice and wide. A lot of throttle transitions. Look at Cody jumping right up on the inside there, doing what he needs to to try and get up onto Thorley's door. Michael Thorley doing a great lead run here, though, out. Nice oh, and big wide. Issue. Oh, Cody's gone and throwing it out the door. He might have given this battle away by over rotating into that final corner. And of course, Stephen Soul that's joined the party. Here it goes, though. And one, two, three. Wow, wow, we'll split it, but Michael Thorley will go through. Good to see him out here. That boy has put some insane hours. I've been watching him uh, behind the scenes on his Instagram and just doing mental things to get this car going. And look at it now. It's so good to see him out on track. Yes, yeah, said he's struggling with getting too much grip with that 2JZ power plant and the Zeknova tyres, but look at the smoke show coming on with the Frankenstein monster. Jace Brown just doing what he needed to, sitting the car up really nice and wide there. Opening the door for David Hunter. David's just still got some issues. It's, it's, it's disappointing to see for David. He's worked so hard and um, you know, he's putting a lot of effort into it, but awesome to see Jace out here driving really well. All He'll right, what's, happy. Happy. what's happening down there, Stephen? We'll find out. It's been it's been one of those weekends so far for David. I'll just quickly jump in here because he's going to call a five minute. Mate, what's the problem? Um, on initiation, I clicked the clutch and there no power, so I'm pretty sure there's a popped intercooler hose somewhere. <laughs> it's pretty guttering, but we, we'll try to get it fixed and get back out there. James McManaway, I've, I've seen him drive. Now, underneath that bonnet, you would think is uh, either a 2J or an RB powered, but actually he has a V8 single turbo. Now, that thing's 
putting out around a thousand horsepower. It is a monster of a car, and he really knows how to drive it. So good to see him out there, putting it in with the big boys here. Danum Templeman throwing it in nicely. A little bit shallow on that outer zone. Didn't quite get out there where he needed to, but James oh, McManaway, McManaway just getting McManaway. lost Throwing in the away. Look at Danum. Oh, at so Chippen. is Danum. Drops two wheels. And he's delaminated his right rear tyre, and he is struggling right now. Look at that reel. It's just about to come off the car. This is a... Oh, gone from one to another for that battle right there, because this is now going to be interesting. Well, the release from the line, as we'll see them go, it's David Hunter's turn this time to play lead. Jace Brown will get into chase position as the 2JZ gets absolutely walloped, and here comes the power. Big angle to start, Cole. Yeah. David doing what he's been doing all weekend when the car's running. A nice clean lead run here, but obviously for Jace Brown, he's got a massive advantage, so really just needs to do a nice clean run here. But David just showing all that hard work that he's put into this car, and it's going to pay off. The thing is really drivable for him, and obviously he can do really well out there. So hats off to that team for finally getting it up and running. They're doing so well. Well, here we go. We gather it up to the judges' decision now. Swipe left for Jace Brown, right for David Hunter, Marco Hara, Joel Counter, and Stephen So One, two, three, and Jace Brown will go through. But here we go, we've got the second half here of Danum Templeman and uh, James McManaway. Yep, and it, 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 as it stands right now, this is a 0 0. So whoever realistically does the nice clean lead run here, Danum with a nice chase, it's, uh, it's going to be a Hard one to call for the judges because they've only got one run. So James needs to do a... Oh, he's just had a little bobble there through that centre section. Bit of understeer. So really, Danum gives him a bit of a chance to come back up onto the inside here. Whole thing together. Danum just doesn't need to make a mistake. Just a nice, clean run. Not too sure here what's go. going on. One, what? Two. James McManaway goes through. So we've got the zoo performance. Zach Nova ties Roundwood, New Zealand. RB34 oh, powered. This is S14. cool. This is cool. I had said. RB. Yeah, I had said also Benny. He's a, a good pick for me, but also Taylor James. I've seen him come through the ranks. He drives so well. He's really aggressive. And look at him throwing it down here. Not quite getting out where he needs to. A little bobble there by Benny in behind, but tucking up on the inside as he does need to. In that 86, they're throwing it down there really hard. Ben just got lost in the smoke. Look at that quick as that a big mistake can happen Taylor just doing what he needs to laying it down a few twitchy moments in the car there but still a nice clean lead run there by Taylor James both of these cars are around 600 kilowatts it's like 900 horsepower at the wheels so that rubber is really getting smoked up as they come through the section here well let's see what Ben using. Jenkins can do this time in that car does North Shore toy O to 2JZ powered GT86 yeah for sure tucking up on the inside there still see not quite getting out to where he needed to car with a bit of a bobble still quick through that section but look at Taylor tucking up on the inside like he needs to you really can't even see him through here and he'll pop out look at that bang Taylor got caught in the smoke just the same as Ben did missed that outer zone if he comes through there he'll he did gather it a bit better than, um, I have to say, than Ben did. But so quick, you can just get caught in that smoke and put you right off. So oh, here we go. We've got the decision coming through here, Steve. One, One two, two three. three. Taylor James will go through. Unanimous. Well, as you can see, it is a beautiful day here at Talpo Motorsport Park. But here we go. We've got the next battle up. We've got Dave Steadman versus Jesse Greenslade. So this is going to be an all-out RB battle. The uh, S14 versus the S15 of Jesse Greenslade. And here they go. They throw it into this first section. Jesse doing nice right up on the inside. Good transition. Might get caught out in the smoke here, and he does. He gets caught out in the smoke there by Dave Steadman. Just a little bit close there to him. Well, Steadman's job to continue to make the drift. It looks like he's going to do it as he powers out of the circuit. Yeah, hard down on that right-hand pedal. Real but nice Jesse, lead run. Big mistake for him. Hey, I, I've been talking and helping with Jesse this weekend, and and I said he's up against Dave here. He's got to push it, and he did what he needed to do, but uh, just got a little bit caught out in that scenario. Yep. So we'll see here with Jesse leading out here for Dave Steadman. Let's see if he can force Dave to do a um, 
an era here and Jesse just run a good clean lead run doing what he needs to look at that car out there doing a nice clean lead run a lot of throttle there Dave getting caught back in the smoke there but doing well to hold it together nearly got caught out well yeah getting sitting in that bit of smoke there but did very well to hold things together but a nice clean lead run there by Jesse we have some awesome talented drivers but here we go the judges have the decision one Two, there we go. Three goes through to uh, Dave Stephens. All right, well, we've got the Saunter LS Power GT86 of Kurt Blackie, and he's going to be chasing down the man who stepped up into the Pro Championship in the Wellington Towing and Transport Nissan S15, Sean Potros, into drift. For sure, Sean laying down a Big lead run here for Kurt, just to jump back up on the inside. Kurt transitions really nicely through that centre section, but Sean just laying down as he has been all weekend. The same run. Look at Kurt jumping right up on the inside there. Can he hold it together? He does so well to gather that back. A real nice flick into that final corner by Kurt Blackie. This guy here is the real deal. Yes, he's a rookie in the Pro Championship, but he is the real deal, and he's going to go up and spice it up with a lot of these pros this season. And it is. It's so awesome to see that these guys are coming into the series. The series is still growing. You know, when, when people pull out and stop. Contact look at start. That. Contact on the entry there, but what a what an entry there. Kurt, opening the door really nice and wide for Sean to tuck up on the inside. Transitions right on that in his own. Sean doing what he needs to, but look, has he overcooked it here? He might have lost it. He gathers it back up, but loses a lot of momentum in that outer zone. Now he's just getting lost in the smoke. Has he going to push wide, drop a wheel outside onto the outer zone of the track? That was a good clean run there by Kurt Blackie, I have to say. Here we go. Steps that went on, but they've obviously made a decision. One, says OMT, Joel Counter, and Stephen Soul says Sean Potros goes through. Sean Potros gets the win. All right, well, Kurt Blackie, there's always tomorrow. Let's uh, get ready for the next battle, the last battle on the uh, top 16, and it will be the Napa Auto Parts Mimico 180. That's the 20B power plant of Adam Davies going up against the Casper Transmissions GT86 of Ben Wilkinson. Welcome back to Pro Boy. Yeah, it's good to see Ben back in that car, feeling it, but uh, Adam doing what he needs to, throwing it down. Nice big angle transitions, a little bit off that in a clip, but... Ben just really getting pulled away by that powerful and uh, very gripped up 180 of Adam. Just Adam laying down a pretty clean line there. But I have to say Ben doing not too bad. What they do is they revert back to um, their lead run. You know, well, you know, your qualifying yeah. run. Well, let's see what Ben Wilkinson do as he leads out this time in that Casper Transmissions GT86. Yeah, he throws it in nicely. Good initiation into the zone. A little bit shallow in that area now. Adam needs to be very careful he doesn't get closed out here. He does make contact with Ben Wilkinson right there. Now, was that the fault of Adam coming in too close, pushing out uh, Ben not to being able to transition? So this this now one this of the one of the things happen. that uh, you, I was there with you this morning during drivers briefing, and they were saying you almost don't need the brakes in this one here. Let's get the result. <laughs> yeah, that makes it a bit clearer for us there, Stephen. Obviously for the outsiders as well, you know, there was a bit more of a bump here, but one, two, three. So we, I would like to really go back to the judges here on this one and get a bit of info, but we'll go back to you, Stephen, there. Got the win, pal. Oh, Got the win. So how does that feel? Oh, yeah, I'm not, not expecting it, to be honest, but anyway, no, it's, it's good. I'm happy with that. Pretty happy, yeah. So unfortunate for Ben, but yeah, obviously the, maybe the, I couldn't see what, where his line was. I was just coming through the smoke. So that was, a, that was an interesting call and basically what happened is um, obviously there was a huge advantage to Adam after the first run. Um, in the second run where the contact was made, the judges actually had a lot of trouble ascertaining fault. So basically they're saying there's, there's a very slight possibility that Adam might have had a contact. You know, we're looking at the skirt off and that sort of stuff, but you know, looking at the footage it's very, very hard to pick. But at the same time, the line that um, uh, ben had taken would actually put him into a position where he would have almost spun himself. So effectively what they've scored on that second run is, um, is a 5-5. Five five. So it's resorted back to the first run where Adam had that uh, big advantage. All right, well, thank you very, very much, Brendan Nugget. Always good to see from the inside of the judges' head. D1NZ Drifting, we'll be Look. back after the break.
All right, well, it's top eight time for round one of the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship Series. Fanger Dan Woolhouse is going to go up against Michael Thorley. Jace Brown will go up against James McManaway. Taylor James takes on Dave Steadman in the Battle of the S14s. And then it will be Sean Potros taking on the other Team DSR member, Adam Davies. That is how they are going to roll out. The top eight is ready to go. And the man driving that Ford Mustang RTR, the activation car that's been built into a comp car, the amount of work and effort that's gone into it by the team from Fanga Dan Woolhouse's Whangarei Garage. And off we go. That Coyote V8. Absolutely sounding sweet out there. Slight bobble as he makes his way back down this time into the hairpin, but a great lead run to start for Fanger Dan. Thorley, though, closing the gap. But look at Fanger, you know, as he's coming around that last corner, just smooth, no corrections in that front wheel, just a lot of clean throttle control. But uh, Fanger in that Century Batteries Castro New Zealand Mustang will have no problem playing Hunter from behind as Thorley accelerates into his drift. Not quite yet, Stephen. A little bit excited. But here they go. They throw it into the first corner. Rolling it out nice and wide. Fanger doing what he needs to. Sitting in behind there. Thorley opening the door. Fanger just washed out a little bit deep there. Thorley pulling a bit of a gap. Fanger might get lost in the smoke there, but does really well. That muscle memory, knowing where the car is. But Thorley pulling a bit of a gap on Fanger through that section. Nice clean run there by Michael Thorley. In the 180. Uh, that, 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 was, that was not bad there, Steve, by both of them. All right, well, it's going to be swipe left for Thorley, swipe right for Fanger, Dan. Well, the opposite direction, actually. And one more time, one more time, one more time. OMTs, we have to go and do it all over again. Also, well, here we go. We've got uh, the two sort of newcomers, I guess, although Jace Brown's been around for a little while. James McManaway in the uh, V8 turbo-powered S15. They're both, of course, uh, Sylvia V8s. They just uh, sound ridiculously noisy and have a huge amount of horsepower as the Frankenstein vie to a monster of Jace Brown powers through. Yeah, there's oh, oh, James contact. coming up just too close. Same thing again happened with, uh, obviously, Adam. James doing it again, just coming in too close. That car's obviously just got a lot of grip and a lot of drive. He's, just kind of, yeah, but he's obviously just trying to hold the thing back together. Jace's car is obviously not quite as, fa as fast as James McManaway had thought, and um, obviously creating that contact has, has given him a huge disadvantage, you know? Well, now, we are back out to it now. We're going to find out, is Jace Brown going to go and put a mark on his car instead? Or we're going to see a bit of green on the JDM. McManaway leads out Jace Brown in the chase position. Yes, James throws it in here, but look at that. McManaway just pulling away through that center section, laying down a good lead run. But to be fair, Jace Brown has already got a big uh, advantage from the contact that was caused by McManaway in that um, first battle right there. So James just laying down a good lead run, nice clean one, and obviously Jace Brown unsure with the damage to his car, uh, did a bit of a safe run and um, brought the car home. Well, let's see what uh, Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, and Stephen Sow have to say, and it's Unanimous one, two, three strikes in favour of Jace Brown. And here we go through the next round. So here we go. This is going to be a good battle here, Steve. Run us through this. Taylor James versus Dave Steadman. Well, Taylor James in that new sporting livery, Zoo Performance, and Zach Nova tyres on the side, setting himself up and straight into a smoke show as he brings the nose down, switches through. You can see Dave Steadman really closing up the gap. A great job by Steadman comes through a nice switch as they come through as they go into the hairpin cop. Oh mate, this is I'm just watching this. This is a really, really good battle by both these people. Obviously Dave having a little bit of an issue coming into the hairpin there. Dave will be leading out, really trying to force an error from um, Taylor in the chase. Well, let's see what the Napa Auto Parts Mimico S14 can do with Dave stepping behind the wheel. It's Tauranga versus Tukarua. And right here now. We have three point, no, we have 6.6 .6 litres of RB power out there. Look at Dave just pulling away through that centre section. Had a real nice transition. Taylor James did exactly what Dave just did, but kept the proximity a little bit better. 
He did dive up on the inside there, but did really well. And look at that. Oh, Dave's got the whole rear tyre up on fire. Really laying it down out there. But let's check out this replay here. Dave, real good lead run. Now, this is something the judges are going to check on. So through here, Dave does slow down the car a little bit more. It gives the advantage of Taylor being able to jump up. But through here, had a really nice line. Pulled away a little bit, which then allowed Taylor to dive up on the inside and gain that proximity back. Realistically, and look at that nice slow-mo there of that real tyre just catching on fire. All right, well, we'll go to the judges. So hopefully they've uh, deliberated long enough to create, come up with a decision. So it's a uh, strike them left for Taylor James, right for Dave Steadman, and it will be one, two, three strikes with Taylor James taking the win. Well, here's our next battle at hand. This is the one more time battle between Fanger, Dan Morehouse, and Michael Thorley, the Century Batteries Castro Mustang. Straight oh, into it. Big entry right Damn, there, nearly dropping the wheel. A lot of angle, a lot of smoke. Thorley doing well, tucking up on that inside there, doing what he needs to, but Fanger just getting that beautiful line off that uh, inner transition there. Tucking it up into that outer zone, and look at that, Thorley. Is he lost in the smoke or is he sitting behind it? He's done so yeah. well to see through that. Holy moly. We saw moly. a fantastic uh, battle. Yeah, that off this Repco replay here. Borley left a little bit of a gap there. Bit shallower there, but Fanger just laid it down in the first part of this uh, section here. Doing what he did need to, to, to doing what he needed to do. And that was a nice, clean lead run. Opening the door there for Thorley to jump in. He washed a little bit wide there, which obviously wasn't the best, and we'll probably give him a few points off. But it's time for the return as these two come back out to battle. This is a one more time battle. It is sudden. It's a sudden. They, they can go again. Yeah, they can go again. Yeah, one more time after that. that. But look at that. Fanger Dan not taking any chances, trying to be right up on Thorley's door, knowing that Thorley's quick through here. Transitions back. Thorley doing a nice lead run there. A little bit wide here. He will transition a little bit slower than what he wanted to to carry that momentum into that rear section. But Finger doing what he needs to. And that's just sitting in behind Thorley there with a nice clean lead run and uh, a Finger a really good chase run. So, And you can just see here, Thorley throwing it in hard. Finger not trying to give as much room as he did last time. As you know, Thorley pulled away in the uh, first part of this battle on the first uh, rerun of this battle and um, Fanger doing what he needed to do. Sitting up behind him, not giving him too much room. But Thorley just doing what he needed to as well. Look at a nice clean lead run there. Let's see what the judges come back with this one as they've got a decision. One, two, three. Fanger Dan, three strikes. He's going to go through into the next round. Yeah, well, here we go. Uh, the next battle up. Well, we got Sean Potros and Adam Davies. This is going to be a good one. The new underdog bringing it to the big boys. So let's see how uh, Adam does on this battle. Sean throwing it in like he has been all weekend. Big angle. Look at that. Adam got caught out right there. Got a little bit too close. Washed himself out. Now he's offline. Sean just doing what he's doing all weekend. Driving away from Adam Davies. Tucking around for that outer zone. Getting to that inner clip, but Adam just making a big mistake there on uh, Sean, knowing that he needed to be right up on the inside of him. We'll watch on the transition here. So look at Adam, he's right up in there. Just needed to drop back to give Sean the transition so he could jump back into the pocket. Didn't do it and uh, really paid for it and, and lost a lot of ground there, Steve. Well, he comes through to finish. What are you supposed to do when you're in that situation there? Like he's created such a big gap. Well, is it going to be the Worthington Towing and Transport S15, or is it going to be the Napa Auto Parts Mimico 180? It's RB versus Rotary, and off we go. It's definitely not. It's 2J versus uh, Rotary there, mate. But look there. See, Sean nearly got caught out at the same, but he, was, he managed to drop back just enough. Had him driving through the section there, Sean, a lot shallower and will transition and tuck right up on the inside there. But doing what he needed to. Look at him, touching the door there. You've got to watch out because it can uh, hinder you. And, and look what at that. has he happened just here. spun out Adam, yeah. all because he got too aggressive. It's, look at this Repco replay here. Now, Sean did very well through here. Got lost in the smoke there. Managed to gather it back up. Adam doing what he needed to. Coming through the inside here. 
on throttle, Sean tucking up on the inside. Now many of us can do this, I've done it many a time. You just get too aggressive, tap the back of Adam, spun him out, threw it, just threw it away. You know, um, Sean obviously wants to push really hard, but it can just hinder you so easily by, um, you know, tapping at him and, and really throwing it away because that there he had in the bag. You know, Adam made a mistake behind him and um, didn't do what he needed to do. So we might see, nah, see, this how they didn't call Adam Davies as a, as a zero run. We are down to the top four and what a top four. Well, here we go. We've got Finger Dan just getting out there. Get ready. We've got him up against uh, Jace Brown. Now, this is going to be an action-packed two big-powered V8s going head-to-head. -head. All right, let's zip them loose. Finger Dan will lead. Jace Brown in the chase position. Top four out there. Look at Finger throwing it down nice. Look at Jace right up on the inside, but got himself caught out again. Got caught on Finger's bumper, washed out. Now, look, dived up on the inside. You just get caught up so easily at that top section of the track there. But Fang is doing what he's been doing all day. Nice, pink, clean lead run there. Uh, laying it down as he should. And Jace Brown playing a bit of catch up. So Jace right up on the inside here. Transitions, just gets caught. Gets yep. lost in the smoke. Doesn't know where he is. Bang, you've loosed, lost five, six, seven, eight car lengths. That's it. Day done. On right there. Exactly, just absolutely gapped. He now has to fall into a qualifying line because he actually hasn't entered on the same thing. It's actually hard to get the car up onto the qualifying line and basically it's like throwing it away. We'll, we'll see if there's anything that Jace Brown can do. He's going to be leading this time here, but it's, it's almost impossible to... Um, actually, we saw it with, with uh, Potros, so it's, it's, not, it's impossible, not impossible. But it's, it's hard. Banger it's very can make hard. a big mistake, you know, get lost in the smoke again. It's sometimes like, well, do I leave them that two car car length and actually sit back and, and sit out of the smoke and and um, not risk it, you know. Right here, Fanger again diving through. See, right up on the inside, did well to hold it. Jace yeah. Brown doing a nice lead run. Washes a little bit wide here. Might drop a wheel, did really well to hold that, but sort of give gave Fanger the chance just to really close it back in, but smart driving by Fanger, you know. Sitting back that little bit, yeah. not getting caught up in the smoke, uh, just giving himself that little bit of room to um, catch the car, so That's very so smart political. driving. The thing he said he loves the most about that car there is he's lowered it in the off-season. That's another thing he's done. It starts. But here he goes. I'm watching Fanger just Look at it. Every, it just, every spot yeah. where he is, he's not in smoke. He's just given himself that extra car or car and a half distance that the smoke has now protruded past where he is and he's just got clear vision. Well, let's come down to the park. We'll go and see what the judges have to say. Myself, I'm expecting to see three strikes in the way of Fanger Dan Wilhouse. Is he going to be going to his first uh, final in Topol for a few years? We'll find out with Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter and Stephen Sowell. One, two, three. Yes, Fanger Dan's going through, through the final. Let's see, well, depends how you do it, but Zach Nova ties by Zoo Performance is the way that they do for Taylor James and, of course, the Napa Auto Parts Mimico machine. That's the 20B rotary of Adam Davies. It's Tukuro versus Tauranga again, and straight into drift we go with Taylor James leading the way. Yeah, nice clean entry there by Taylor. You can see the car sit down and rip up real nice. Adam doing what he needs to, trying to sit just up on the inside there. Is that contact? Dives back up on the, uh, on the inside again on this final corner. But look at Taylor's car sitting down, really using those rear tire tires to um, hook the car up. When they came through to switch. Did they? Well, you know what we might be able to see is if we roll back to the Repco yeah, replay. Yeah, well, good point. So when they came through to switch in the second part, but a nice job at the, anyway up front at this moment for Taylor James. Yep, Adam transitions through here nicely. Taylor on throttle. They drop a wheel a little bit through here. Very right close. I don't think there was yeah. a bit of a bump there. Nah, it's a bit of a Different gap Different camera there, angle. And I saw the back bubble, so... What do you think that was going to do? Well, I saw it bounce when he hit it. Oh, okay. So it might have put him off a little bit. Oh, here we go. There we go. Look, we got this in-car foot. 
This is good, isn't it? So here we go. Look at the smoke these guys are trying to go through. So Runs up on the inside here. through here. Look at the sun. I didn't even think about what the sun would be doing as they come into that final corner, but this is really good to see where everyone can uh, see how much these drivers are going through as they come into that uh, final section. That, that sun is terrible. Anyway, here we go, they've switched around. Yeah, return to serve time, so it's Adam Davies' turn to lead out Taylor James. Adam Davies accelerates off into the first turn and then will kick it into action. Slide yeah, action for sure. Look at that snappy entry there by Adam Taylor right there. Well, he's fallen back a little bit on that entry. Adam is flying through this section there. Listen to the car hard on throttle as it sits down here into this final outside zone. Tucking the nose back in here on the inside, but he has just pulled a gap on Taylor James through there. Wow, I did not see that coming. Yeah, check out this Repco replay. So awesome entry, in, entry here by Adam Davies, throwing it out nicely, tucking the nose in here, transitioning right on that outer zone as the judges want. Tucking the nose in into that area. Taylor just getting a little bit lost in behind there, not being able to gain that proximity. Well, it's going to come down to what the judges have to say. They're deliberating at the moment. Who is going to take it? Will it be Adam Davies? Will it be Taylor James? Mark O'Hara says Adam Davies. Joel Counter says Adam Davies, and it's not going to matter what Stephen Soul says. So we've got a, on the left-hand side in the Zoo Performance Act, Nova Tires, Rumble New Zealand, RB34 powered Nissan S14. Taylor James, the Tukuroa kid, and he'll be going up against the Vitua Tires. V8, Sylvia of Because Hashtag Jace Brown. Let's see what happens. This is a battle for third and fourth. Yeah, Taylor throws it in there real nice, Steve. Jace just got lost in the smoke instantly right then and there. Taylor doing what he needs to, getting into that uh, inner clip there. Running out nice and wide, throwing the car into that outer clip. Jace now just playing catch up, just got really caught up in that smoke as soon as he initiated. Look at that, just what David Hunter was saying. Watch this, Jace has a bit of understeer coming into that first section. You can't quite see it because he was caught up in the smoke, but that's it. Day was done just then, he was playing catch up, trying to play cat and mouse and catch up to Taylor who was just doing another little uh, textbook run. So very hard for, for Jace Brown. now. He had been sitting over that far side quite a long time, and that's something to always remember um, as a driver. Right. Well, let's see what they do as... Wow, oh, that was Brown aggressive rotates. straight into it. Now, that's all about what I was just saying about the grip level. He would have not known, knowing, all right, in that last one, I didn't throw it hard enough. I need to really throw it hard. Bang, rotated heavily to angle. Nearly put Taylor off quite heavily. And Taylor's really shallow now. Correct. Obviously, that first part, you know, the rest of the section, then he was sort of playing catch up. But to be fair, he has a big advantage. There was a big fault by Jace, and same even with the uh, entry just then. Another look at this replay, thanks to Repco. Auto parts. Yeah. So obviously Taylor up the inside here, pretty shallow, but obviously he had to uh, evasive action as Jace rotated so heavily. Wow. Is he going to spin out or back off a little bit? And then from there. You're just playing catch up, you know, it's uh, it's a tough one on this track, you know, you can fall behind so quickly and it's such a smoky track. Alright, let's uh, see what they've got, they say they've got a result, we'll find out which way it's going to go, Taylor James to the left, Jace Brown to the right, one strike, two strike, that's enough, Taylor James will take third position. So what's next, Taylor James P3, Jace Brown P4. Who is going to be number one? Let's well, it find is that out. time right now when we go to the last battle of the day. Two drivers that have battled their way through to this point right now. It is the final battle, which is going to award ourselves a winner of round one of the Babbling D1NZ National Drifting Championship, driving the Napa Auto Parts Nissan 20B. The 180SX totaling is Adam Davies going up against a two-time champion in the Castro New Zealand Machine, it is Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Who is going to take it? We're about to find out. Forget the rest, you've got the best. Valvoline D1NZ, it's final time. Yes, indeed it is, Steve. We're looking forward to this. Fanger Dan leading out Adam Davies out there. A little bit of a correction straight away for Adam Davies, but jumping right up on the inside there. Nearly blocked himself out, learned those lessons from before, but a little bit straighter through there. Few corrections from um, Adam in behind, really trying to push hard to get up on Fanger's door. Fanger just doing what he's been doing all weekend, 
real smooth, cruisy line. Doing what he needs to, laying that Mustang uh, power down and um, really giving a good good lead run for Adam to try and jump up onto. But as we've seen through here, and we will see here on the Repco replay, look at that. A bit of a correction straight off by Adam coming into the section. Nearly got caught out again through there. Vanger doing what he needs to. Rotates really into angle. Another correction there through Adam. Dropped the wheel on the inside there. Vanger just sitting out nice and wide, opening the door up for Adam to come up on the inside. But a few uh, minor corrections there from Adam in the chase. Uh, this is going to be a good, a good final battle. The second half of the final for round one of the Balvaline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It is now Adam Davies' turn to lead the way. Fangadan jumps into the chase position and the smoke show is about to begin. Yeah, Adam doing a real clean entry into there, rotating nicely, but look at Fanger coming up on the inside just through there. Adam opening the door so Fanger can tuck up on the inside, but doing what he needed to. Got a little bit wide there, and oh, Fanger's gone off. Look at the smoke. He has rotated and come out of drift. Oh, no, this is a big mix-up, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Holy moly. Here we go, Repco replay here. And I'm doing a good lead line through the center section, rotating to angle nicely. Banger tucking up on the inside here. Adam rolling that throttle on, getting the car out into the outer zone nicely. Bang, banger, bit wide, out on the zone, out on the dirt, both wheels, round he went. Just like so just that. Gone, just right? like that. You Steve. Can just see the silhouette silhouette in the background. Yeah, look at this. So this is Fanger in car footage. This is what he's trying to see. Rotates on that, bang. On the, on the dirt, nothing he can do. He's a passenger at that point and um, just holding on, so. Well, we have got a result. We are ready to crown ourselves a champion for round number one, Saturday, back to back. Which way is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Fangadan? Is it gonna be Adam Davies? The Tauranga man takes the win for round one of the Beverly D1NZ. Congratulations, round one win, round one points. How does that feel, bud? Uh, pr pretty happy with that, all right, to be honest. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a rough start, but um, no, we've, I'm happy to come away with a win. Napa, auto parts, Mimico machine's been on song all weekend, sounding great, so yeah, awesome. And now there's only one thing to do, spray the champagne.